So now you've finished closing up your basement. And it doesn't look anything like this because you haven't taped it yet. So your next step is to go with, for the phone and call someone to do your mug work for you. So here you go. I'm gonna teach you all the tips and all the tricks that you need so you can finish it yourself and you're gonna do it like a pro. You're not gonna do it like that little course you get at the building store for two hours. You're not gonna do it like they show you in the videos I've seen on YouTube so far. This is a complete guide to how to buy the right tools, how to use them, and how to finish this basement like a pro with a finish that's even better than the house you're living in right now. So, first thing you need, basic tools. We're gonna to keep it simple. You got a four inch flexible blade knife, all right? This is the workhorse. This does all of the little details and all of the setting of the tape. The other knife you're gonna need, and I'm gonna suggest this if you've never done this before, is a four by 10, about the same size as a heater register in your house. This is, should be really sharp. Now I like this one. This is a stainless steel blade. It won't rust. It's very strong. When you buy it, if you start using it right away, you're gonna get this little grainy look in the mud. So grab yourself a sanding sponge. Sit down and watch your favorite TV show. Spend about 30 minutes sanding the edges, and then it'll go silky smooth when you're applying your mud. That's your secret, okay? Next thing you need is a hawk. I've seen a lot of guys talking about these little metal trays and they put a couple scoops of mud in there and they carry it around and ugh, wasting your time. You're gonna spend all your day putting mud in and taking mud out of that little bucket. This is a hawk. This is the, this is the workhorse for any professional taper. While you're working, you can also catch any mud coming off the ceiling. Brilliant, keep your floors clean. Other than that, all you really need is some mixing equipment. For the basics, we have a slow speed drill. Now this is something that I would recommend if you're gonna mix the whole box at a time. Uh, it might be a tool that's not worth investing in if you're only doing your one basement. So you can use a variable speed drill. Just make sure that you're only mixing half a box at a time so you're not overworking your drill and making it burn out. Okay, we need some sheetrock 45. And this is just a compound that comes in powder form. You're gonna add water and make your own mud. This is designed to set really quick. It has a hardener in it. So there's different applications that you wanna use a hardener and we'll go through those in a few minutes. Other than that, you need some mixing paddles, pails, some water, and a sponge. If you don't have a sponge, don't start. Go buy a sponge. Without the sponge, you can't keep the pail that you're keeping your mud in clean. It'll dry out, get crunchy, fall in your mud, and as you're putting it on your wall, you're gonna be making big lines and grooves everywhere and destroy your work. So once you've got all the basics set up, I recommend getting a platform like this as well. These are really quick and simple. They're made of aluminum and you can move that around real easy. Helps you to work on the ceiling. Step ladder will also work, but again, you're limited. You can only work in a couple feet at a time. So having a platform like this helps make the job go a lot smoother. Okay, so you'll notice when you go to the store, there's a lot of different kinds of mud available. There's, um, well, this is CGC as a manufacturer, but there's, there's beige, there's white, there's ultralight, there's for uh, heavy fill, there's all kinds of different products. I prefer to use the machine mud. This is the one that's designed to go in the, the we call it the bazooka, the big tube, and it, it's more of a, a commercial application. Don't go buy a bazooka, they're very expensive, but the mud is fantastic. So here's what we do. It's a couple extra bucks a box, but it comes in a really nice consistency. It goes on the wall really smooth. And so what I do is I just take the whole bag out, Save the box because you're gonna need it for the garbage afterwards. Turn it upside down, empty it into the pail. Okay. Just like that, pull the plastic over. That's only 25 cents of mud left. I like to stay clean. If you really want to, you can fight with that and get all the mud possible out of there. I'll leave that up to you. Now, this mud is ready to be applied. Most people just take it right out of the box and go. And they'll put it on their hock, grab a little bit of mud. It's very stiff. You see all the air pockets? And they'll just work it up a little bit. And you'll see it get a little bit smoother. Okay? That's not terrible mud, but in my business, air pockets are very dangerous because what happens is it gets settled in behind your paper tape and then after you've done your first coat, you've got to go around and cut all the paper and clean it up and then fill it in and that's just a great big waste of time. 
Okay, so what we do, one handful, two handfuls of mud. That's it, that's the whole secret. Get your mixing blade in there, stick on your slow speed mixer. Now, hold on for dear life, squeeze with your legs. Start near the top, really slow. Work that water through. All right, and then just kind of finish whipping it up. Okay. Put your blade back in the bucket of water, keep that clean. Now I'll show you the difference. It's already silky smooth, all right? It's a little bit thinner, real easy to work with, really obedient. The air pockets are gone, and I can use this mud for my first or my second coat, okay? And then it's gonna be perfect. Now for my final coat of mud, we wanna go even thinner, because the last coat is really the one you're sanding. I'm not a big fan of sanding in between coats. I like to do clean mud work. So what I'll do is I'll take another two handfuls of water and I'll mix this one. Now this coat is even thinner, okay? It'll stay on a hawk, <laughs> but it is really soupy. That's a perfect finished coat. When that's dry, you can sand that with relative ease, and if you have a nice clean application, you hardly have to sand it at all. So. Before you begin, the first step is actually to fill all your gaps. So anywhere where your drywall has been installed on a bit of an angle and opened up a hole, you wanna fill your hole and you wanna use something with a hardener in it because when you're taping, if you fill it with regular mud and then apply your tape, the mud will shrink as it sets. It'll pull away from the tape and you'll get an air pocket. So what we do, take your knife. Now when you're mixing a dry powder, you always want to add a little bit of water first. Okay, in this particular powder, it's about a one-third, two-third scenario. Again, we're gonna use a smaller mixing blade here. You could even use a paint mixer or a grout mixer. Now, we'll take a look inside the pail. This is all about what you see, okay? Right now, it's very lumpy. Well, I just add a couple handfuls at a time until we get it the way we want it. That's the safest way to do it. There we go. mixer in your pail of water. Now here's, this is nice and fluffy, okay? Nice and easy to work with, but because it has a hardener, within 30 minutes, this will be hard, it won't shrink anymore, and you'll be able to tape over top of this. All right, so we've shown you all the tools and all of the mixing techniques. We have our mud, we're ready to go for first coat. So let's go fill some caps. If you're enjoying these videos, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, but most importantly, comment on the videos by all means or a suggestion of video you'd like to see, let us know. We'd love to be in touch.